Okay, for math today, I want to let you know that we have the first part of our Unit 7 math test coming up tomorrow. That means we're going to spend today doing some review of things that we've learned over the course of this unit. Now, our math test will look a lot different than normal because you don't have a paper copy of the math test at home. You are going to be answering questions on Seesaw. So today, I'm going to have you practice some of the things that will be on the test. That's number one. Number two will be you're going to do two pages in your math journal. And the third part of math today will be I'm going to show you how you can make your own Robbie the Robot if you want. Because today is Earth Day, and on Earth Day, we celebrate our world and figure out ways to keep it clean. Something we can do is recycle materials. So Robbie's actually made out of recycled materials, and I'll show you how we can do that today. All right, you're going to need your math notebook and your math journal and a pencil, and let's get started. Okay, so one of the things you're going to need to do it, on the math test tomorrow is to be able to write a fact family. Now you have been using these fact triangles since the beginning of this unit. So you have a whole set of fact triangles at home, right? So if I said, write down four number sentences that go along with this fact triangle, could you do that? Try it out in your math notebook right now. Okay, what if I showed you this fact triangle and I said one of those numbers is missing, can you figure out what the missing number is and write four number sentences with those numbers that are on the triangle? What is the missing number? How do we figure that out? This will be on the test tomorrow, so this is good practice. The next thing I want you to do is write down this number sentence in your math notebook. This is a subtraction sentence. You can solve subtraction number sentences a few different ways, but one of the ways that we practiced earlier in this unit was to count up and to count back. Now remember, when we count up, that means we're starting at the smaller number and counting up to the bigger number. So I would be saying, 9, 10, 11, 12. So if I counted up, starting at the smaller number, getting to the bigger number, then I would say 12 minus 9 equals 3 because there are 1, 2, 3 numbers that I said when I counted up. Or is it easier to count back? If I count back, that means I would start at the big number and count back this many. So if I start at the big number and say 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Look how many numbers I wrote down. I wrote down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 numbers, which is exactly what I was supposed to do because I counted back 9. Started at 12, counted back 9. Was counting up faster or was counting back faster? I tried to draw arrows on here and you can't really see them. Was counting up faster? Or was counting back faster for this problem? Counting up was faster because there were just less numbers to get from 9 to 12 than to get from 12 counting back 9. You to solve a problem on the test and your job will be 
to tell whether you thought counting up or back was faster for you. All right, another question the test is going to ask is about defining and non-defining attributes. We just did this a couple days ago. So if you look at a triangle like this, what is a defining attribute about this triangle? What makes this triangle a triangle? Hopefully you're able to say that it has three sides, that it has three corners, um, it has straight sides. Triangles never have curvy sides, right? So your job on the test will be to name a defining attribute. That means what makes that shape that shape. Then another question would be what is a non-defining attribute of this triangle? Well, a non-defining attribute would be that it's red. It's pretty small. It's pretty thin. None of those things really matter for whether it's a triangle or not. On the test, it's going to ask you to name a non-defining attribute. So you have to be able to do that. Remember, those are things that don't matter when we look at the shape of that object. The test will also ask you to add some numbers together. Well, that's pretty easy to do. We add numbers together all the time. Sometimes it's going to have a missing number in a number sentence. So, in your math notebook, are you able to solve a number sentence like this that doesn't have a number in the front? Try it out right now. Another thing you'll need to do is to be able to solve a number sentence that has the equal sign in the front. Remember, it doesn't matter whether the equal sign is over here or over here, whether it comes at the beginning or the end. This number sentence is still the same. 3 plus 6 is something you can easily do by counting on your fingers, counting in your brain, counting on the number grid, and then putting the answer in the box. The next part of the test is all about subtraction. There will be a lot of different subtraction problems you'll need to try to solve, and you are welcome to use your fingers, your brain, some objects, a number grid. You can use any tool you need to subtract, unless of course it's asking your parents for help. But one of the questions looks like this. It says blank minus three equals two. Now, that blank is in the beginning. That means the dad number is missing. That means the biggest number in this number sentence isn't there. We need to figure out how to get it there. I think that the easiest way to do this is to think addition to solve subtraction. I have to flip these number sentences around for it to make sense to me. What I mean by that is I take the two numbers that I know are the smaller numbers, like this is smaller and this is smaller than this one because I know that's how a number sentence works, a subtraction sentence, and I know that's how a fact family works. I'm going to take those two smaller numbers and put them in an addition sentence. That's think addition. Now I can solve the subtraction problem. What is 3 plus 2? Oh, easy. It's 5. So that means that the number that goes in that box must be 5. It must be this big number that goes here to make sense of the sentence 5 minus 3 equals 2. So you'll have to solve one like that on the test. Make sure you're ready to think addition to solve subtraction. Okay. A couple more 
uh, questions that are on the test are about time. So you'll have to read an analog clock. Remember an analog clock is a clock that's a circle that has all the numbers on it. And you're going to have to tell the time. Now we've only learned time to the hour. That means you're only going to see a time that's like 4 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 3 o'clock. It's never going to be like 3.56 or something like that. We've only learned time to the hour, so you'll be able to read the clock pretty easily. And one of the questions also asks you to draw hands on the clock. Remember, the longer hand is the minute hand. The shorter hand is the hour hand. Longer is minute, shorter is hour. Please remember that when you take that test. There is also a question about function machines on the test. We have been doing so much with function machines, I'm not going to have us review that right now. I would like you to get your math journal and open up to pages 153 and 154. That's actually a page that's back to back. So you can't see both of them at the same time. But those are the two pages that we are going to be doing today and that you will be taking a picture of to show me in Seesaw. So these pages are great because they have a lot of questions that are similar to questions that are on the test. That's why we're doing both of them today so that we can really get ready for that test. All right, page 153. Um, number one says, what number is it? It has a nine in the tens place. It has a zero in the ones place. What does the zero mean? Does it mean zero tens? Does it mean zero hundreds? Does it mean zero ones? Write down what the zero means. Number two says, circle all the ways to show 18. So there's three different models here, three different things. Which ones show 18? You're going to have to count them up to figure that out. Number three says, Amelia has 12 toys. Corey has six toys. How many more toys does Amelia have than Corey? Remember, this is the kind of story problem where one person has more, one person has less, and we're trying to figure out the difference because it says how many more toys. So you're not adding 12 and 6. That is not what we want to do for this one. Remember how to solve this? We've done it lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of times. How do we figure out who has more and how much more? Then you're supposed to write a number model here, which is a number sentence to tell the numbers that you used. Number four, you are subtracting. Three times, in fact, subtract, uh, use those three number sentences. And then it says, what addition fact could you use to solve 14 minus 9? You're going to think addition to solve subtraction. Number five says, this is a um, name collection box. We have a 7 in the corner. One of the answers that someone put is 3 plus 4. First, let's check that. Does 3 plus 4 equal 7? Yes, it does. Okay. Then it says, Raul wants to show 7 tens in the box. Is that right or wrong? Explain. Would it be correct to show 7 tens, 7 longs in this box? Hmm. Tell if that's right or wrong, and then tell why. So you're going to have to put more than one word for that answer. When you're done with page 153, flip to page 154, 
and you're going to do another round of math boxes. So this one says, one, Stacy is playing base 10 exchange. She has three longs and seven cubes. She picks up four cubes. Show what she has when she exchanges with longs and cubes. All right, now I told you yesterday that we are not playing base 10 exchange because we don't have base 10 blocks at our house and you do not have a partner, um, a first grade partner to play with. So I'm gonna show you how this problem will work if we were playing this game. So if she has three longs and seven cubes, let's draw that first of all on the page. She has three longs and seven cubes. See right here, I drew that. Now it says she picked up four. So let's also draw that. One, two, three, four. Now that is too many cubes to be correct, right? We know that when you have 10 of these cubes, you should exchange them for a long. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna draw a line that just shows that we are separating this box to be able to draw the second part of the answer. So we'll just kind of put a line here. We're gonna fill up this space with the new answer. What would it look like if she did an exchange? Well, 10 of these, I'm gonna circle 10 of them right now. 10 of these should turn into a long. How many longs would she have if she had three longs and then 10 cubes that are turning into a long? Yeah, she'll have four longs. So we're gonna draw that in the second part of this page, or sorry, in the second part of this box here. And then see how she had one cube left over here? Well, we have to show that here too. So this is showing the same number. This is showing 41 the first time we drew it. And this is showing 41 because it's four longs and one cube, right? They're both showing the same thing. It's just that this one is a lot easier for us to count very quickly because we are using those longs. All right, number two says record the time. So remember yesterday we talked about digital time, how you put the hour colon minute right here, hour colon minute. So write that down on those lines. Number three says use longs and cubes to show these numbers. So how can we show 90 with longs? You don't need to show cubes to show 90, right? Show 90 with longs. Then leave yourself some space. You're going to need to show 19 with longs and cubes because you'll need both to be able to do a number like 19. Number four says, a parking lot has three red cars, eight white cars, and five silver cars. How many cars are there? So, this is a number model with three add-ins. Write down those three numbers in the number sentence. Figure out what they would be when you add them up. And then tell how many cars. Number five says solve. And then there are um, number sentences with three add-ins. And then, oh my goodness, check this out. This has three add-ins, and then it has a missing add-in on the other side. Whoa, this is new for us. So if we show four plus three plus one, what would that be? Four plus three, that would make seven, plus one, that would make eight. Now. This is showing blank plus four. How can we split eight up so that it's show so that um, it can be something plus four? How can we make eight? Four plus what equals eight? Four plus four equals eight. So a four should go right there, right? 
it, the next one is pretty similar. We know that four plus three plus one equals eight. And then we have to split up eight so it can be something plus one. If we said eight minus one, that would be seven. So would a seven work here? Seven plus one equals eight? Yes, it would. Now, four plus three plus one is the same as seven plus one. Okay, you can solve this last one on your own. Number six shows numbers that we can add together and I'll let you figure those out on your own. Take a picture of pages 153 and 154 and post them on Seesaw when you are finished. And if you would like, I'm going to make another video about how to make your own Robbie the Robot for Earth Day. If you would like to watch that, you can do it. Making your own function machine is optional and just a fun thing that you can do with materials around your house. All right, I'll see you again tomorrow for the math test.